Hey everybody, welcome back to Ken in the Kitchen. My name is Ken and today I'm tackling pie, specifically apple pie. This is my good enough apple pie recipe. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, you have to peel all of these apples. And to do that, I actually got this fun little gadget on Amazon. I'll go ahead and put a link to it down below. It really does make short work of these apples. I had three Granny Smiths and two Honeycrisp apples. And as you can see, it also cores the apples in addition to peeling them. It even cuts them into slices, sort of uh, like when you make snowflakes when you're a kid. Remember doing that? And then you're supposed to drain these, and I... I tried that. As you can see, I'm, I'm putting them into a colander suspended over a bowl, and you can see how I'm kind of pulling them apart as, uh, as I'm stretching them apart, you know, from their accordion shape. But I did this, and after the end of half an hour, there was, like, literally no juice at all in the bottom of the bowl, and maybe it was because I forgot to, um, you know, Put some sugar on them first because I hear that sugar and salt both will draw water out of things. So maybe that's what I should have done first. And now it's time to combine our ingredients. We've got three tablespoons of water, two tablespoons of salted butter that I just kind of mushed up between my fingers and dropped in the bowl with all the apples. We're then combining some cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. To that, we're going to add half a cup of granulated sugar, and then one tablespoon and one teaspoon of cornstarch. And then just get in there with your fingers and mix it all up. Try to get all of those lovely slices of apple coated with the cinnamon and the nutmeg and the cornstarch. You know, just like that. Easy peasy. Now that we've taken care of the filling, it's time to tackle the pie crust. I know, I know, I can hear your comments and I am ignoring them. Because for me, pie crust is the least important part of the pie. The pie filling is where all the flavor is as far as I'm concerned, and the crust is just a delivery mechanism for getting pie filling into my mouth. And I know this now feels like something that Aunt Sandy would have done back in the day on Food Network while she would day drink her way through a Kwanzaa cake. But trust me, for me, this is going to be perfectly acceptable. This is good enough and it's going to save me a lot of time. The way I see it, most of the flavor, probably 95% of the flavor, is the pie filling. I mean, the best crust in the world cannot save a pie with donked filling. Can't do it. So that's where I am choosing to spend my time and effort. And I will leave the crust to people who can mass produce perfectly acceptable crust. So. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so now we will take the bottom layer of the evil store-bought pie crust and just lay it gently in the pie plate and start to assemble our pie. At first, we're going to try to be really neat about this and do a little pattern, and then we're going to give up and just kind of put it all there willy-nilly and build a hill of apples upon which we will put our top crust. And we'll just unfurl that, and we'll try to be as neat as we can about crimping, but this is where everything really starts to go sideways for me. As I was trying to crimp, I noticed that I was poking holes in the dough, so I just kind of gave up trying to make it look nice and just made sure that it was actually sealed. And then we cut the obligatory vents in for the steam to escape through to minimize pie dome. And then last but not least, we put an egg wash on there, which is just a whole egg mixed with a tablespoon of water. And you put it all over the pie crust to make it look all nice and pretty and magazine-like. At least, that's the theory anyway. The last thing is to put one of these silicone things around the edge of the pie so it doesn't burn before the rest of it browns. And then you dump it into an oven, which is going to be initially set at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're only going to keep it at that temperature for 15 minutes, after which time we lower the heat to 375 degrees and bake for another 35 to 40 minutes. And then we take it out of the oven 
and hopefully we don't drop it on the floor, Ken. Come on, you can do this. Just put it on the thing. There you go. Close the oven. Good job. And then we'll just let it cool on a cooling rack overnight, probably. So after all of that, how does it taste? It tastes good. It really does. It came out very, very good. See the, the uh, apples, and I know this, this piece, I mangled this piece getting it out of the pie dish. The, the apples have texture. They didn't just turn into soup or gel. Uh, the crust itself that everyone seems to be so concerned with, uh, it turned out good. It's flaky. It, it looks good. It tastes like crust. And come on, crust is a delivery system to get delicious pie filling of any kind into your mouth. So why waste a lot of time on it? You're probably saying, well, Ken, why don't you just go to the store and buy a pie? Well, I am more particular about my pie filling than I am about my crust. I like to be able to pick what apples go into it. In this case, I used Granny Smith and Honeycrisp. The spices that are in there, I like having thinly sliced apples, even though that does tend to give me, uh, give us pie dome, because even Karina, who makes her own crust, will get pie dome, that gap between the, uh, the pie crust and the apples. So yeah, all things considered, this is well worth my time. It really came together a lot quicker than if I had tried also making my own crust, and it tastes... Mm. It tastes great. I can taste the roasted cinnamon I used and the nutmeg. It's so good. And it still has that... You can still taste the apples for what they are. It doesn't just taste like sweetness, you know, that you get from, say, a, a canned pie filling. Yeah, I am totally happy with this. I am calling this a win. And I will post the recipe down below for those of you who are interested in you know, your own version of a good enough pie. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for joining me on my pie journey today. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them in the uh, comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Does this seem like something that's a, a worthwhile shortcut to you? What would you have done differently? Do you have any of your own favorite recipes for, for pies, or even crusts for that matter? Maybe one day I will try to make a crust and you might have some suggestions on recipes that would help me come up with a, a good crust. But yeah, anything at all, leave in those comments down below. And until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care.